In this video, we will learn about the data source configuration in detail. So most of, of the time, what happens is that when we do any kind of a configurations in WebLogic, okay, so we get a lot of details from the development and some other teams. And when we, we, we just copy and paste and then do the configurations, okay, but it is equally important to understand what exactly we are doing. Specifically, when you wanted to have an expert, okay, then you should have a complete knowledge of what exactly you are doing and what is the purpose of that. And in this video, I will explain you about the different configurations that you select when we go for the data source configurations. So to create a data source, you have to go to the logic admin console and then inside the services data sources, you will get an option to create the data source. So there are different type of data source, generic, grid link, multi data source, proxy, UCP. But this video is specifically dedicated for the generic data source that is used most of the time in most of the professional environments. OK, so just go to data sources and just click on new and then generic data source. OK, after that, what all the input that you have to provide for the configurations? The first one is the name of your data source. So that you can define according uh, to the application, business application that you are going to be configured. OK, and there is no restriction. So that one you can use any name. Second scope is you can set the default, which is global. OK, then you have to provide the GNDI name. So this is a very important term when we go for any kind of a resource configurations in WebLogic, not about only data source. So what does it mean GNDI? OK, let me explain you a small example. OK. So now what we are, why we are doing the configuration of data source is that because your application need a connection from the database. Okay, so if an application need a connection from the database, we know about that. For that we have a data source. Application will connect to data source and then data source will connect to database. It will execute the query. The result will return back to your application from the data source connection. Okay, so that is a very generic flow. But how this application going to connect with the data source? So application is a code which is developed by the different developers. Right. So there has to be a certain term or certain some kind of a configurations. OK, physical configuration or entity. OK, that should connect your application with the data source. Right. So that physical entity that connect your data source, your, your application with the data source is called GNDI. OK, Java naming directory interface. So you can say it is a kind of a lookup service. OK, it look for the uh, different kind of resources that you have configured in your web logic from your application. OK, so if any application need a connection from the database, then it should configure with a JNDI name. OK, and when you are going for the configurations of your data source in the JNDI name section, you have to specify the name of JNDI that, that your developer has configured in your application. OK, this has to be matched with the, uh, the JNDI name that has been designed and developed in your applications. OK, so now you have two scenarios. If your applications are already developed, you are configuring a data source. Then before configuring the data source, you have to check with your developers what is the name of GNDI I have to be configured. OK, and if there is no application and then you are going to configure a data source and then your application will be built a later time. OK, then you can specify the GNDI name according to the application, business applications or entity as per the feasibility. And once your data source is ready, you have to provide this GNDI name to your developer saying that, OK, this is the data source. I have used this GNDI name. So when you are going to develop your application, OK, please use this GNDI name. But second case is very rare. What happens is most of the time your application is developed. Uh, we do the development of application, OK, and then we do the configuration. So you have to take this GNDI name from the developer. Third one is your database. OK, so this is a GNDI name that we have. Uh, I have given in the screen QA test app slash DS. OK, this is a GNDI name that I have to configure in my application. OK, and once this is connected, your application is connected with your data source with the help of GNDI, then it can connect to your database. OK, and third is the what kind of a database you are going to use. So Oracle WebLogic server support multiple database. OK, so here I have selected the Oracle database. Now, on the second screen, you have to specify the driver, which kind of a driver you are going to use. So what exactly is a driver? Your web logic need a connection with the database, right? So that again, that 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 connection is get established with the help of such, some, some code. You have to write certain kind of a, a code which will connect your web logic server with the uh, backend database. 
okay but you don't need to write that one okay that that code is already developed by the oracle and that is shipped in the form of uh, drivers okay so because i have selected the database as oracle now you will see the different options for oracle drivers so these are the different uh, kind of a drivers that has been provided from the uh, oracle with the which shipped with your oracle weblogic server okay uh, and what is the difference now you can see that you will see there are different type of data sources specifically one is XC driver and second is non XC. Okay, so first one you can see first four, uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, the first four drivers you can say three XC and next five is just thin. So, what is the difference between XC and non XC? When I'm talking about non XC, that means the driver file which is there without the XC entry. Okay, this is the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Okay, and then apart from that one, we have a data directs Oracle driver type four XC and data directs Oracle driver type four version any. Okay, so that means you have a nine Oracle drivers total and then two data directs driver. Okay, so let us understand in which detail what exactly it is. Okay, so now first to understand this XA and non XA, you have to uh, learn about the transactions. Okay, so we have two type of transactions in WebLogic server. One is called local and second is called global. Just the difference is very straightforward. The local transaction, which also called as a non XA, transaction okay that means it is a local transaction which involves a connection to just a single resource such as a jdbc database connection or maybe a jms queue or maybe some other transactions involves okay so what exactly is mean local transaction or non extra transaction is that you have only one backend resource is involved in the transactions in very simple example if i say about a local transaction then i would have a only single database in the backend for my transactions okay so whatever my application is doing insert update delete whatever my application is doing it is doing only in a single database okay so now we you know that we are in an enterprise world there where, where we have a multiple applications connected across a single application okay maybe with within your internal organization or maybe uh, uh, with the third party service providers okay and they all work together in integrations okay and where the data is flow from one from one database to another database from from second database to third database that may be in your within your organization that, that may be across the different organizations okay so when we talk about the local transaction or non xa transactions okay so that means i have only a single database i'm talking about a jet, uh, only a database here so i'm giving the example of only the database so i have if i have only single database my all my transaction is happening in a single database okay so in that case i can use a non xa driver or you can say that is a local transaction because it is happening in only a single database okay so now when we talk about the xa transactions okay where we utilize the xa drivers or which is also called a global transaction or which is also called a distributed transactions and third is also called a xa transaction Okay, so all names are for same global distributed or XA. That means I have a multiple resources are involved in the backend. Okay, so in terms of database, I would have a multiple database involved in a single transaction. Okay, there could be a database in my uh, HRMS database for for the new joiners, and there could be a corresponding database uh, uh, in the third party organizations. Okay, who may, who may be your background verification of a third party organization, there may be they have their own data uh, database. Okay, and whenever you do any kind of a transactions in your application, there has to be some record need to be updated in your local database of HRMS. And the same time, uh, similar or same transaction related some data need to be updated in the third party background verification organization database as well. Right. So that means a single transaction involved uh, the multiple backend database. Okay, and the same transaction, and it 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 would define as a single transaction. If I'm doing a single transaction from the application, and when it will be commit or saved in all the participating database at the same time, that I would define as a transaction is completed. But if suppose that I have a two or three database involved in a single transaction, in, and if that time any one of the database is not available or may not able to commit the record due to any reasons, then the full transaction should have to be rolled back. So that means transaction would be same. It is a single transaction like, like, like a local transaction, but only difference is that it has to be committed. It has to be transported in multiple data sources in the backend, and it has to be committed at the same time. So either it has to be committed in all a database at the same time, or either it has to be rolled back from the all database at same time, because it would defined as a single transaction. Okay, we would like, we would not want to get data inconsistencies 
like suppose that your data is getting saved in two database and but it is not getting in third database okay then your data will be inconsistent okay because it, it is a single transaction so when we work in an environment where we have only a single database or single resource in the back end and we can select the local uh, data driver okay which is a non thin only defined as a thin in in in, in your drop down drop down box there are four uh, different thin drivers are there and when we are uh, involved in a global transaction or a distributed transactions or in exit transactions then in that case you have to select the exit driver based on the database that you are going to be use and based on the architecture you have single instance or multiple rack instance kind of configurations we have you can select the uh, driver accordingly but most of the time for non exe we select oracle driver thin for pooled instances connections or you can say the another common one is oracle thin driver for service connections okay and similarly for xa you have a oracle driver thin xa for service connections version any okay so this is the difference between non xa and xa or you can say local and and global transaction okay and this will give you an idea of which driver you have to select the third one is your data direct okay so we will cover this data direct type of driver in this uh, slide okay so apart from that your uh, oracle okay logic support uh, other data database as well maybe your application is deployed in your web logic but the back end database maybe uh, microsoft ms sql or maybe your db2 or maybe some some other open source databases okay so it can support multiple databases so if you have to connect to any particular data so uh, database okay as i said you need a driver file for that but and what exactly is a driver file it is a code which is written to connect to the database okay so similarly to oracle if you are going to connect with your mysql uh, database then for that you need a mysql driver with the weblogic server right and if you are going to connect with uh, some db2 or some other drivers or databases so you need the corresponding drivers to connect with the database because they all are a different database different technologies okay all together and they have a different code and uh, written for to connect with the database okay so as of now with 12214 the jdbc driver version is 19.3 okay and in addition to that okay there is a driver you can see the mysql connector j8.0 which is a mysql connector java commercial 8.0.14.-bin.jar this is a driver file for your mysql okay when we talk about the uh, branded data direct drivers are also that means these are the certain more drivers that those have been shipped with the web logics to connect with some other more databases apart from your oracle and then mysql okay and for uh, web logic 12214 to connect with your oracle you will get the driver files with the name ojdbc8.jar and ojdbc8_g.jar and then ojdbc8dml.jar okay this is for specifically called for your jdk 8s and all the driver files for your database is installed inside your oracle home oracle_common and modules so if you go to that directory you will see that there are lot of jar files are there and they are nothing but they are the driver files to so connecting with the backend database for oracle mysql db2 and then for other maybe for other database as well okay and all these files are reference or you can say defined in your weblogic.jar which is a master file of your weblogic which contain all most of the references of your java codes okay so, and this file is always there in your class path okay so that because this weblogic.jar file is referencing your jdbc drivers and is loaded in your class path so you don't need to define any kind of a driver in path or anywhere because this is called by the weblogic.jar file okay and apart from that if you plan to use some other third party jdbc driver okay maybe you want to connect your connect your web logic with some other third party uh, databases for that you have to take the driver files and then you have to upload that driver files in your modules folder and then you have to define that path in your uh, path variable if you are going to use some specific third party jar uh, databases which is not defined in your weblogic.jar file okay now when we talk about weblogic branded data direct drivers that means it support db2 database informix microsoft sql server and sysbase so next screen so maybe suppose that we have selected a xa driver so if you have selected a xa driver then in next screen you will just get information that you have selected a xa jdbc driver to use to create database connection in your new data source and the data source will support global transactions and use a two phase commit global transaction protocol okay so now we have discussed about what is exactly is global transactions and when we talk about a two phase commit it is the same that we i have discussed just some time back 
in a global transaction there are multiple backend databases are involved multiple data sources are involved okay and when we do a transaction okay so it doesn't matter if, uh, how many database backends are involved in, in in your transaction okay but this is called a single transactions and your transaction has to be committed at the same time in all databases or either it has to be rolled back from all the databases at the same time okay so this is called a two phase commit when i'm talking about that in a single transaction which involve there we have multiple databases and the, your transaction is getting saved or commit in all databases at same time or maybe it is going to be <clears throat> roll back from all the databases okay so this functionality is specifically is defined as a two phase commit so this is giving you an information that you have selected an exit driver which will involve in the global transaction and it will be enabled with the two phase commit at the same time now suppose that you have selected a non exit driver okay this is a sim simple thin driver okay which is involved in your local transaction so for that you will get a screen as shown on the slide okay there you will get an option that transaction options support global transaction so there are certain cases where if you want your local uh, database or your local transaction to support support your global transactions okay due to certain reasons okay so it will give you an option to select that one but in that case <clears throat> the commit would be one phase commit only okay because you have a single database in the back end or single resource in the back end so the commit will be only a one phase commit but your local transaction may support your support global transaction but with certain restrictions and inside that support global transaction you will get logging last resource and emulate two phase commit two option then that is something that is related with your performance uh, of your uh, uh, thin <clears throat> driver or you can thin connection now on the next screen you will get the options to configure your database details the first one is your database name so this database name is your SID or you can say the service name of your database. If you are not sure about the DB service name, then you can go to a data box and just run the status command for your listener. And inside listener, you can be able to see your service name. Okay, and even if you are not sure, then maybe you have a different database team. You can check these details from the database teams as well. Okay, because this is happening in the most of the times in a professional environment where we have a different DBA support team. So for configuration of your data source, you can get all these details from your database team. What is the name of my database or what is the name of my service name of my database? What is the host name of my database on which port your services are running, database services are running? And what is the username that need to be configured for your data source? And what is the corresponding password for that? Okay. Now on the next screen, it will automatically populate the details for you, which you can see there. The first one is it will driver class name. It will select based on the driver you will select. It will create a URL for your database based on the driver that you have selected and the configurations of the database that you have provided. And then you, it will show you your database username, password in encrypted form, properties where you will, it will show you the database. Okay, and then a test table name. So this test table name is used by the web logic itself, okay, to check the availability of your database if your connection pool is healthy or not. Okay. Now, next last screen, just click on test configurations. And if you have provided all the details properly, your database host name, service name, password, and all details are correct, okay, then your test connection would be success. After that, in last screen, you have to target your data source. So, so target it means you have to target it on certain servers, either it is on admin server, either it is on cluster, on managed servers, okay, and on which managed server admin server or cluster unit deploy is where you have deployed your application which need to connect with the database if you have deployed an application on managed server qa underscore server one then you can target your data source to target one managed server and if you have deployed your application on a cluster okay then you, you will see a cluster option there on the screen and then you can select the complete cluster because your application is deployed on the cluster and then your database is ready Data source is ready that you can see on the screen. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.